Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, this week coming from a rather remarkable new vehicle, which you may or may not have heard about. I'm sitting in the Toyota Mirai. It is a hydrogen fuel cell hybrid car, and this is the first time I've driven it. So this is a proper fully charged, which is the first time I've driven it. It is a, a, a production car. It's being, they're, they're making thousands of them. It's not an experimental vehicle. It has hydrogen uh, in a tank at the back. It has a large battery pack. It has an electric motor at the front, and it runs off both the hydrogen and the battery. That's what makes it move along. It's very, very similar in many ways to a Prius. It's a hybrid. And then it's got a foot brake, which is off, and then I put it into drive, like that. And the doors lock, and it went doom, and it's ready to go. And there it goes. It's that easy. It's not a hard car to work out. So it's about the same size as a Prius. Um, uh, it's, it's got, I mean, all the things that you would, uh, you know, expect from a, a modern car. It's got, like, as in, very good visibility. I just like checking that. The mirrors, exquisite. Very, very clear rear view. A clear rear view at the back, which is better than a Prius, because the Prius has got a great big bar across the back, so that's very nice. And uh, very nice, quite a nice big sat-nav screen, which is good, very clear. We're actually currently in an exquisitely amazing modern house. Um, at a secret location. I'm not going to tell you where it is because I don't want you to come and find it because it's too exclusive and posh. I can see we haven't got a full tank of hydrogen, but we've got a fairly full battery. So sometimes the vehicle's running on just the hydrogen that's, that's moving you along. And sometimes it's the fuel cell that is pumping hydrogen, mixing it with air, which then creates electricity, which then drives the motor. So it's quite a firm ride, because I would imagine it's relatively heavy cars. Quite a lot, the, a lot of the technology of the car, it's all underneath the seats. So the obvious um, question is with these cars is where do you charge them? Where do you refill them? Because at the moment there literally are three or four hydrogen filling stations in, uh, in the UK. So there's not like a lot of places you can go and refuel this car which is very like the early days of electric cars is that you know there weren't loads of rapid chargers all over the country there was well, when i started driving an electric car there was one that said you could plug your car in at home and you can't currently plug this into your hydrogen outlet in your garage or outside your house because we don't have them however there's some really interesting technological breakthroughs technological developments and indeed installations of uh, how you produce hydrogen and how you deliver it. Now, the favourite one of mine is uh, done by a company called ITM, who have just installed a wind turbine, a, uh, a thing that looks like a shipping container, which is a hydrogen splitter. So the wind turbine generates electricity, the electricity is used to split water, the pumps then compress the hydrogen, so the hydrogen bleeds off the water, uh, they compress the hydrogen, store it on site. So there's no transportation, there's no uh, external influence. That hydrogen is made from wind. Uh, you know, there are energy losses, but when you've got a wind turbine that's going 24 hours a day, it's not such a big deal. You're not burning fuel to make uh, fuel and wasting energy. You're using the wind. So, and I mean, the, the, the dream that, that at every big motorway service station, there's a 200 meter high massive wind turbine <laughs> that is producing hydrogen on site, no transportation, minimal losses in terms of, you know, s sending energy down long wires and things like that. You know, it is an extraordinary potential. And then you drive up to a hydrogen fuel fueling station in your Mirai and you plug it in and you refill it in about, it takes about five minutes to, to refill it at phenomenal pressure, just off the scale pressure. I'll put the, the, the numbers of the pressure because I'm not going to remember it while I'm driving a brand new car I've never driven before when someone's coming the other way and I just missed them. So one of the, yeah, the experience of now having driven it like all of 15 minutes is that it's, it's really, it is very kind of Prius-like. The only difference is when I do this, so I put my foot hard down then, which I shouldn't have done because we're in, a, in an urban area, um, you hear that noise as opposed to a petrol engine. So that, and that's really the only difference. The actual feeling of driving the car is very, very similar. Uh, you know, and I think I somehow expected, uh, as in the Hyundai, I expected something like really exotically different when you drive a hydrogen fuel cell car. 
and actually it's it's very very similar to uh, an electric car it is an electric car that's the thing it's an electric motor there's nothing else in here there's no petrol engine wearing away in the background it is just an electric car but it's an electric car with hydrogen as a battery as opposed to as opposed to a battery a lithium ion battery it is um but it's very like the the, the Prius in the way it operates so except it's a little bit more responsive I'd say now I'm thinking about it because when you do put your foot down it's it's instantaneous where there is a I've always made jokes about the Prius because I'm very fond of the Prius even though it was loathed and despised but it, I've always said that the the Prius battery management software is very democratic and they have to have a full they have to be quarate in the committee if you're going to do anything so you put your foot down in a Prius and they have a meeting they decide whether it's a good idea and if they think it is a good idea they'll give you some power well that that political process takes some time whereas with this one I think it's slightly more dictatorial because I'm going to put my foot down now so there's a fractional delay there's a very very fractional delay before all the pumps kick in and it pushes power to the motor I've just made a decision that I really enjoy driving this car it's it's really nice to drive and as I've driven I've kind of understood some some more of the graphics that I can see so I've got 146 miles of range at the moment on uh, what is it just just over half a tank and so you and it's a com so you'd have a completely different attitude so just imagine a world where there are hydrogen filling stations you know nearly as commonly as petrol ones now you you do immediately start to drive it slightly differently because even in the Tesla which has a lot a, a greater range than this car when it's got a full tank you kind of you plan ahead you work out where your next charge point is it's nothing like as challenging as in uh, you know like a, a leaf or an i3 or a zoe or anything like that but it's but you still have that kind of consciousness whereas in this you think i'll just hammer it <laughs> i'll hammer it i'll drain that damn tank because then i'll fill it up in three minutes you know and that is the the in a sense what up to now has been the fantasy of hydrogen is that people see it as a direct and clear replacement of the way we fuel petrol cars um uh, which it is. I mean, you know, it take. I think it does take. I think anyone would accept it does take longer to fuel this car than it takes to fill up a tank. You know, there is a definitely. It's not as quick, but it is hugely quicker than recharging a battery. There's no question about that. So I think it is a. It's a fascinating uh, challenge, really. To uh, I think the biggest challenge this car is is to the, the existing fossil burners because this car replaces it, the, the the psychology as much as the technology of the, the fossil car. You know, you drive it when you need fuel, you stop, you plug it in, it goes you, you carry on driving. You know, you don't have any of those ridiculous terms that I always argued against anyway, a fake, but you know, the range anxiety stuff. That isn't an issue in a car like this. It's just very, um, it's just like driving a car, you know. <laughs>